and welcome back to Tabletop for One's podcast. I'm your host, Daniel, and we're going to be talking about Kickstarters, new pre-orders, new game arrivals, and anything else that comes to mind as we talk about the solo gaming side of the board gaming hobby. And I'm really grateful to have you here today. And so we'll jump right in with the new crowdfunding campaigns, and most of these will be Kickstarters with one on GameFound, and these will all have started in the last week. And so we're going to start right off the bat with Pulp Invasion. Now, Pulp Invasion is this fantastic game that is designed by Todd Sanders and is published by Albin Viard. I own Pulp Invasion. I think I own like the first three expansions, but they have a new expansion coming out. It's called the Galactic Map. And so it's this new expansion that adds four cards and about like a dozen, you know, little cubes. And that's about it. And it's $10 with $3 in shipping. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about this. I like Pulp Invasion. I like it a lot. I don't know that I like it enough to spend $13 on four cards and a few cubes. You know, I, I'm really wondering why there is not a print and play option for this. This is really something that ought to be a print and play option. You know, it's just, it's four cards. <laughs> I mean, you know, it'd be easy to print and play. Oh, I don't know why it isn't offered. It's just a strange decision. I mean, obviously, uh, $10 for four cards is way up there in price, so that's where they're making their money, but at the same time, you know, charge $2 or something like that for a print and play, you know, and you'd have less overhead, you won't have to print it. And so, yeah, I'm just wondering about that. Now, I don't know that it's even worth it. I don't know that the galactic map is going to add enough to the gameplay, enough that it would change it in a way that I'd enjoy it. I think it just adds more complexity to something I don't want to add more complexity to. And the nice thing is that if you don't own the game and you want to get into this game, you can order it off of this Kickstarter. But the problem is, is that it's $72 to get into this if you don't own the base game. If you own the base game, it's $55 for the expansions. And I would say that this is one of those games, while I enjoy it, it's not for everyone. So if you're looking at picking up Pulp Invasion, I definitely recommend that you do your research, make sure this is the kind of game that you want to get, and you know, make sure the cost is right for it. Alright, and so the next game on the list is called Rocket Ranchers. Now, I've been following Rocket Ranchers for quite some time, even before they added a solo mode, but now they have a solo mode for it, and now their campaign has started. This is a game that is only going to set you back $20.00. So that's not too bad, and they have flat rate shipping, which I question. I'll talk about that in a minute. But Rocket Ranchers is designed by David Bach, and it's this game, it's a set collection game where you have these different, you know, alien species coming out in a grid, and you use your different tractor beams to uh, bring the uh, aliens into your own little, I guess, ranch or something like that, you, their own corrals. And uh, so you're trying to avoid getting space cats, and yeah, the, it has some fun art. The, the art looks fantastic on this game. It looks to be a very, you know, simple set collection game for, for $20. It's not too bad. And it's a hand management game similar to like Century Spice Road or Mercurial where you're going to be playing cards and then deciding at some point to pick all the cards back up for your turn. And so I like that mechanic. It's a very, you know, favorite mechanic of mine. And this game boasts a solo mode that includes multiple difficulties and, you know, an easy to use AI. It looks really good. So all those things look really good. So let's talk about what I don't like about this campaign or what, you know, it's something you just need to know and kind of watch out for. Now it has no stretch goals, but it has daily unlocks. And so that's a good thing. I, I prefer that to the stretch goals personally. Uh, it just, you know, everybody knows that they're guaranteed to get these things. And now the unlocks don't look like anything great so far. They've unlocked three space cats, which are basically alternate art cards. Now they are like a mini expansion promo deck that will be sold as an add-on if you don't back the $34 pledge, the Star Citizen pledge. So they want you to back that one in order to get the unlocks for free as well as an extra expansion that comes with it called severe weather and now let's talk about the flat rate shipping okay so it says that they have flat rate shipping and the united states is ten dollars canada and mexico i am so sorry it is thirty dollars oh my goodness like that's just too much australia uh new zealand my friends down there 
forty dollars. Yeah, it's 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 just expensive. Now it says flat rate shipping, but it says estimates for all pledges, subject to change, VAT not included. Always look at that small print because I don't think it's going to be that little. It's going to be more. So bear in mind, it's probably going to increase, especially if you go with a bigger pledge. But Rocket Ranchers looks fun. I like set collection games. I like hand management games. So this is one that looks fun to me. Like I said, I've been following it probably for like a year. And so I'm glad they added a solo mode and it looks like it's done well. And so next up we have Everstone. And so Everstone is an engine building game that combines action selection with a new twist on hand management. All right. So that sounds like a lot. I love engine building games. Now I haven't really heard a whole lot about this. I saw a few previewer videos about it and it was kind of hard to tell exactly, you know, how this plays, but it looks to be like a kind of a tableau building, engine building kind of game where you're mostly managing your player board and it looks like you're managing little else on the main board. And I'm not sure what to tell you about this game because there's not a whole lot given on the Kickstarter page that tells you exactly how it plays. Now it does say that it's designed for solo play. You can challenge four different characters for an intuitive solo mode, whatever that may mean. Uh, but that looks good. But the rest of the gameplay, I just can't tell what it does. It's, it's really hard to tell. There isn't a lot of examples. And I haven't watched the playthroughs, so you're going to have to watch those playthroughs to make sure this is the kind of game you want. But I do like engine builders, but I think I would wait till retail for this one. However, there's one thing about this one that I like. I like the fact that this is a, a you know, a first-timer campaign. So Sam, I don't know his last name, but the designer of the game, it's his first time making a campaign, making a board game, you know, publishing and all that stuff. And so I do like, you know, supporting indie publishers, first time publishers and that sort of thing. So this is right up my alley, but we are going to talk about the cost. The cost is up there. Okay. So it's $60 for the game and then at least $18 for shipping. So it's going to be a lot. But I do hope Sam is successful with this. I hope he does a good job with it. He's at 19,000 of 25,000. So just a little bit to go and it looks like he'll make it. He's got 30 days to go or 28 days to go. So he should probably be fund, probably double his uh, goal. And so the next game on the list is Philharmonics. And this is uh, published by Arcona Games. And so this is a worker placement action selection Euro game. And it's about, uh, you know, orchestra management, a space orchestra. And so this boasts a really impressive kind of table presence as you have a main board and player boards and then you have these little uh, orchestra standees uh, standing up in the orchestra. And so it looks really good from afar. But as I look closer at it, I'm just not sure about this one. You know me, I love my worker placement games. I really do. But I don't know about this one. But it does have a solo mode with an AI, so that's good. But the interesting thing is, is that, you know, the AI is called Maestro. Now, I think I've actually played a game where the AI was called Maestro before, and that was Ovation. And so as I'm looking at this game, I'm thinking I'd rather play Ovation right now, you know? I'd rather play that game. That's an engine building game, and I've had a lot of fun with it uh, when I previewed it. And so I'd rather play that one. So for me, this one's a pass. But if you like the theme, if you like worker placement, action selection, and all that, this may be one for you. Just realize that the cost is kind of up there. $79 for the base pledge. And then for the deluxe, it's $100. And then you're looking at $18 to $23 for shipping. So either way, you're spending $100. All right? So that's a lot of money for a worker placement Euro game. And so I don't know if it's worth it. That's a lot of money. I'm just not sure. It is a first time designer and of course I do like supporting the first time designers, but for this one here, I'm going to wait for retail. All right, so I think I may have saved the best for last. And so we have Dyson Crusoe, or is it Dyson Crusoe? I think it's Dyson, <laughs> but anyways, it is published by Gabe Barrett. Now Gabe Barrett did the Hunted series. Uh, he did not design this one. This one was actually a Korea release, I believe. And so he's publishing it here in the US. And so you're shipwrecked and stranded and you must, you know, survive on this island. It's a dice placement kind of game. So 
you roll dice and you manipulate them, gaining resources and doing all sorts of things. It looks really good as far as the gameplay goes. I really like the looks of the gameplay. And so, yeah, it sounds great. It's a solo-only game. I forgot to mention that earlier. It's a solo-only game, which sounds fantastic. And so, yeah, I think this is going to be a big hit among solo gamers. You know, especially since Gabe Barrett is, uh, you know, so popular among solo gamers. The price comes in at $24. And on top of that, they have a print-and-play option. I love this. I might pick up the print-and-play option. I'll have to see, you know, how many components. Let's see. There's uh, about 30, 40 cards, two boards, and you just need some cubes, discs, dice, and meeples. And I always have components like that around, so that wouldn't be an issue. So I think I'm going to pick up the print and play for this. Yeah, I think that's going to be a good idea for me. But I do want to mention the fact that the shipping in this game is only $5. $5 to US and Asia six dollars to canada uk eu australia new zealand oh my goodness that is a deal so 24 dollars plus five or six dollars a 30 dollar game solo only game yeah mm, this is great i i love this gabe barrett if you happen to be listening great job on the presentation great job on the pricing this is fantastic so Definitely looking forward to this one. So I do have to decide, am I going to go with the print and play option or the other one? I'll probably go with the print and play option. I just think it's, you know, going to be better for me. Although, I don't know. I'm tempted on the other one. We'll see. All right. And so that's it for crowdfunding. And so there are a few games that looked okay, but definitely that Dyson Caruso looks really good. So definitely looking forward to that one. Looking forward to all of you who are pledging that and are going to enjoy that. I think you will. Yeah, I think it looks like a really good game. We'll see. And so we move on to pre-orders. And so there were a few pre-orders that I didn't talk about last week that I wanted to save for this week. And we're going to first talk about Undaunted 2200. And so Undaunted is designed by David Thompson, a friend of mine, and Trevor Benjamin. And David Thompson, just fantastic guy, fantastic designer. I love all his games, and I want to order every single one of them. I have a lot of them. I actually have a lot of his games. And yeah, so this is going to be a game that's one of four players. Now check this out. This is like triple David threat, all right? <laughs> so we have David Thompson as a designer. Then we have the solo mode by David Digby and David Turtsy. Wow, this sounds like a fantastic setup for a great game. And so it's going to be the Undaunted Universe, but in the future, 2200. So we have a sci-fi element here. And yeah, it looks so good. So this one's going to be coming out probably closer to March, it looks like. Because I don't think it's come out yet. The release date says somewhere between now and March. I'm, I'm guessing later in March. And so yeah, Undaunted 2200 Callisto is what it's called. It looks to be fantastic. Again, David Thompson, David Digby, David Turtsy, all three Davids in one game. What could go wrong? <laughs> All right, and so next up, uh, there's a pre-order up now for Tangram City. Now, Tangram City is one of Uwe Rosenberg's game, and it's one of his tile laying games. So this is going to be on the lighter side, and so you're going to be putting together Tangram shapes that uh, you know into a city and trying to get points and stuff like that. But um, it's coming to the U.S. Now, I just don't know when. I don't have a date. It's sometime this year. <laughs> so I don't know exactly when it's going to come. Now, like I said, it looks like the lighter affair of his games. But I do love Uwe Rosenberg. It's just, you know, he makes some great games. And so, yeah, definitely looking forward to this one. It's going to be on the cheaper side. So you're looking at about $24 for this one. So Tangram City up for pre-order. If this is one game that you've been waiting for, you can go ahead and pre-order it. And then next, all right, so check this out. Keyforge Adventures, a new multiplayer scenario. It's actually a solo to three player scenario. And now, if you haven't played Keyforge before, it's, you know, a competitive game normally. It's, you know, meant to be like magic and that sort of thing, but it's all pre built decks and you just take a deck and play. Now, in Keyforge Adventures, you're actually going to be fighting against a scenario or a boss and that sort of thing. And so they have a new one called The Great Hunt, and it's coming out in March. I'm excited about this. This is great because I just got the key 
Kraken or Key Racken or whatever it's called. I just got that one. I haven't played it yet, but I picked it up at my uh, local game store. And so I'm looking forward to put my Keyforge decks to use. And so, yeah, Keyforge Adventure is coming up with a new multiplayer scenario. I know a lot of people who have played the other two scenarios, have played them to death and wanted new scenarios. Well, check it out. March 2024 here. It's going to be $20, $25. So, yeah, pre-order it if uh, you want to get it or just check your local game store next month. And then last but not least, do we have some Heat fans out there. Heat Pedal to the Metal was, you know, one of those big releases last year that took the solo gaming world by storm. Now, I have not played the game solo. I've only played in multiplayer, but there is an expansion. It's called Heavy Rain. And so this is coming out, looks like April 26th, and it's still up for pre-order. I see it for pre-order at Card Hoss. And so, yeah, if you want to check it out there, you can pre-order it. It's only $28.00. But it looks like it has two new tracks, a uh, new uh, champion season, a seven player expansion too, and all sorts of things like that. So it looks pretty good. Now, like I said, I've only played it multiplayer. I've only played it once. But I know there are a lot of Heat fans out there. So if you want to pre-order that expansion, you have that chance. All right, and so that's it for pre-orders. So let's talk about some of the new arrivals. And so the first one is Warp Lancer. It was a solo board game that was published on GameCrafter during a crowd sale. It's designed by Martin Goodrealt. I, I probably butchered your name, Martin. I apologize. But this is a sci-fi solo only game. And so this came to me from GameCrafter, I think, yesterday or today. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, it just came. And so I've been looking forward to this one. I'll probably feature it on my channel later. But it looks really interesting. You know, it looks like one of those space games where you go out, you fight, you get money or whatever, you go back and upgrade your ship and, you know, go on different missions and that sort of thing. And then I got Capital Lux 2. I've been waiting for this one for a long time. I was able to get a used copy, so I picked that one up. And Capital Lux 2 is designed by the same team that did Revive. I love their games, and so yeah, I was gr glad to have it in the collection. Now, I don't actually know much about it, but I just trust that their gameplay, you know, is good. And so yeah, looking forward to this one. And then next up, I have Five Tribes. Now, Five Tribes is an old game. Well, I mean, not really old. You know, I think it's like 10 years or so. And so, Five Tribes by Bruno Cathala. It is a, uh, a Mancala type game, you know, where you pick up a bunch of meatballs and you drop them one space at a time until you run out of them. And so, this does not have a solo mode in the box, but there is an official solo mode online. And so this was a game that was, you know, voted by my patrons on Patreon to make a tutorial solo playthrough for. And so I had to order it and pick it up. And so I look forward to playing it. Uh, I, you know, I love this idea of a game. So <laughs> I haven't played it yet, but it looks fantastic. I can't wait to try it. And so from here, I'm going to jump right in to talk about the games I played last week. And so I played Wormspan, all right? I played it three player with my 13 year old son and my seven year old daughter. And then I played it solo twice and I played a multiplayer at my game night and so Eli, Jewel, and Darren if you're listening I had a great time with you guys I'm glad you guys were able to play the game with me and I appreciate you listening to me as I taught the game it was just a fantastic experience now I have to tell you guys Wormsman is such a great game I am so surprised by how good this game is. Now, I have not played Wingspan before, and so I don't have that frame of reference, but going into Wormspan, I was able to learn it easily because the rule book is superb. It is one of the best rule books I've read, and yeah, it's just such a great game. And the solo mode is done so well. I play with what is called the Ravel mode. See, they provided two different solo modes for the game, for two different kinds of audiences, one that wants to simulate the way the game plays, that's the normal mode, or Ravel mode, which has a you know distinct interaction between you and the AI. And so I really appreciate them including that extra solo mode because it's fantastic. I love this game. It's so much fun. There's so many different cards you can play and they feel all powerful as they give you things and you're able to extend your actions and do more actions and, you know, put all these cards out on a tableau, activating them, getting all sorts of bonuses and eggs and resources. It's just fun. There's just a lot of things that, you know, reward you as you play. And, you know, the best thing about this is like, as I've been teaching people, whether it be my kids or my friends at game night, is watching them 
kind of, you know, see how it works and then it clicking. And then all of a sudden they're just having a blast, you know, taking off everything that they're doing, getting all these bonuses and that sort of thing. I just love watching that. I love seeing that happen when people enjoy the games. I, it just, you know, warms my heart. And so, yeah, Wormsman has been a great hit for me this week. I've also played Dwellings of Elder Vale twice with my kids, with three of my kids. So we played four player and had a great time. Dwellings of Elder Vale is just one of the best worker placement tableau building games out there. And then other than that, I played Korra Rise of an Empire. I have developed a solo mode for that. Now, I'm balancing it right now, but it is already really good, in, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, it's just my experience, but it has allowed me to play that game solo, and I really enjoy that game. And so having this solo experience worked out really well, and I, I love it, and I can't wait to share it. I'm probably going to post a, you know, a rough draft of the rules on Board Game Geek later this week. So look for it there if you want to see it, but Core Rise of the Empire is one of those civilization-building games where you're doing uh you know different actions and moving up these tracks of population and military power and that sort of thing until you get the most points at the end of the game it's fun it's great and i love the solo mode that i made all right so we're going to wrap up the episode there you have to let me know in the comments below what you thought of the games that i talked about you have to let me know how many of you are getting dyson crusoe i know there's a lot of you out there that might be getting it and, you know, I think I might break my no backing rule for it. It looks so good. I, I, yeah, I'm just impressed by it. So definitely looking forward to that. Also, the Keyforge Adventures, that looks good too. But yeah, let me know what you're backing or pre-ordering. Also, let me know if you have any questions about board games, solo gaming, or anything else. Any other topic, you can let me know in the comments. But I really appreciate you being here, and I hope you have a great night.